A moment ago, you said you told Kenny to tell everyone that the mac and cheese wasn't to be touched. That's right. And Kenny was clear on what you wanted. Crystal. Any chance Kenny ignored you? Ignored me? Any chance he forgot about it? No. Any chance Kenny left your room and said, This dude's crazy? Nah. When Kenny spoke to the others and told them not to touch the mac and cheese, any chance they ignored him? You ever made mac and cheese, bro? No, bro. Ever ordered mac and cheese? Nah, man. Ever put your scrumptious mac and cheese in another man's hand and asked him to put his scrumptious mac and cheese in yours? No, bro. I watched the food, Mark. I watched it so that others wouldn't starve. Do you understand? Yeah, bro. Are we clear? Crystal. Jacob, I just have one more question before I ask Sean and Miguel what happened. If you told Kenny that Santiago's mac and cheese wasn't to be touched, and what you say always goes, then why would Santiago's mac and cheese be in danger? Why would it be necessary to move the mac and cheese to your mini-fridge? The mac and cheese was old. It was being transferred- That's not what you said. Uh, you said it was being moved because it was in grave danger. I did. You said it was in danger. I said grave danger. You, you I said... know what I said. I can ask our mediator, Jim, to tell I you. I know what I said. I don't have to have it repeated back to me like I'm delusional. Why say the two things, Jacob? Sometimes men take matters into their own hands. No. You made it clear just moments ago that Kenny would never go against your word and take matters into his own hands. Kenny does what you say, or people starve. So Santiago's mac and cheese shouldn't have been in any danger at all. Should it have, Jacob? You piece of shit! Jim, can we stop this? I'd like an answer to the question, Jim. I'd like to hear the answer, too. If Kenny told everyone that Santiago's mac and cheese wasn't to be touched, then why did it need to be moved to your mini-fridge? Jacob, Kenny ate the mac and cheese, didn't he? Because that's what you told Kenny to do. All right, stop this! When you realize you couldn't hide it, Jim, you cut Kenny loose. You had Jim. Max move the dirty Tupperware. Uh, damn it, and Mark! And you deleted the security camera's footage. You tricked David so he wouldn't tell anyone. That's enough, Mark. Calm down. Jacob, did you eat the mac and cheese? Jacob, you don't have to answer that question. I'll answer the question. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth. You can't handle the truth, Mark. We live in a world that has food, and that food is guarded by the friends of hungry men who can't wait to eat it. Who's gonna guard that food? You, Mark? You, William? I have a greater responsibility than you can possibly fathom. You weep for Santiago's mac and cheese, and you curse me. You have that luxury, that the mac and cheese, while tragic, was probably old anyways. And my existence, while grotesque and incomprehensible to you, keeps us from going hungry. You don't want the truth, because deep down in places you don't talk about at parties, you want me guarding that food. You need me guarding that food. We use words like honor, code, loyalty. We use these words as the backbone of a day spent defending food. You use them as a punchline. I have neither the time nor the inclination to explain myself to a man who rises and sleeps under the blanket of the very lunch protection I provide, and then questions the manner in which I provide it. I would rather you just said thank you and went on your way. Otherwise, I suggest you grab a chair and stand guard. Either way, I don't give a damn what you think you are entitled to. Did you tell Kenny to eat the food? I did what I had to. Did you tell Kenny to eat the food? You're goddamn right I did.